This island is like a big catcher's net, but on both sides. It catches all the strange things that come in on the storms from one side, and it catches. And, and all the strange things that come in on the ferry. All the strange people that come in on the ferry. Well, <laughs> Set up cameras in your yard. We're on a ferry riding to one of North Carolina's most beloved, most remote places, Ocracoke Island. I'm Eleanor Spicer Rice, and this is North Carolina, naturally. Some of us blow into the island and only stay for a little while. Others get there and stick around, sometimes forever. That, that's my grandfather, Homer, and Ailiff, my grandmother, Ailiff. This house was my grandparents' house. When this house was built, this had not yet been invented. This was invented in 1903, so it was built about 1865, the best we can tell. But you're the seventh generation who's lived on Ocracoke, right? I'm the eighth generation. Those are my great-grandparents. He was the uh, keeper of the life-saving station here from 18, uh, 1883 until 1903. Ocracoke Island is only 8.6 square miles of land. It has fewer than a thousand people, but it holds so much life. When I moved here permanently in the 70s, we didn't have deer, we didn't have squirrels, we didn't have raccoons, we didn't have possums, we didn't have minks. What we've got, happened? We've got all those now. What happened? Some of them just swam over here. Why Some, didn't they do it before? I don't know. Some of them may have Y'all weren't here in yet. Car. You weren't here yet. Once, once you, Philip Howard got here, they were like, here we come. <laughs> we're coming too. Storms blow unexpected visitors onto the island. We've had coconuts on the beach, gooseneck barnacles clinging to things. Some things come in and they leave. We've had 179 species seen at the end of December. Okay, that gives you a perspective of how many birds we have here. And there's a whole bunch in the summer that would not be there. So, you know, when you think, oh, 400 species of uh, on the Outer Banks, of if you see a checklist or something, we've, we're pretty up there on that. Everyone remembers the black bear who swam from Portsmouth Island, spent a few days wandering the village and swam back. You know, we were just talking a little earlier, bears will show up on occasion here. So you never swim know. Swim over. You it's never know who may show up. Water. Other visitors come to stay. Peter Vankovich found Ocracoke's birds in the 1980s. This was the place he wanted to be, stranded on the small strip of land with his birds. The island holds Vankovich just as it holds the banker ponies rumored to have wandered off Sir Richard Grenville's ship Tiger when it ran aground in the 1500s. It holds the bulrush and the seaside goldenrod, too, that make strange noises when the wind winnows through. It holds glass lizards, legless, snake-looking creatures whose tails shatter by breaking off, sometimes in pieces, if you try to grab them. It cradles migrating birds in the soft sands and sea oaks, gives them shelter and nurseries and food for their journeys. It holds ancient turtles. Five of the world's seven sea turtle species swim ashore to mingle with the six-year-round resident species. If you look around us, you see that we're surrounded by all kinds of marsh plants. But if you look closer, you can find a thousand different things here to see. You can see all the snails here. You can see the different textures and you can see the paths of what we're here to find outside the Ocracoke Lighthouse, the Nutria. Well, they fit in. We've got a nice environment and habitat for them. Just think of it. These are vegetarians. They like wetlands and that's what Ocracoke is. So. It's not a surprise that they're here. Even though Nutria's burrows weaken roads and their appetite for marsh plants diminishes the island's natural strongholds against the weather, Ocracoke holds them the way it holds the rest of its living things. Most ocean islands formed when volcanoes spit their bedrock of lava out from beneath the Earth's crust. The creatures and plants that dwell there now arrived by happenstance, by swimming or flying or washing ashore. Our outer banks, however, did not come from volcano fire. 
Instead, these islands formed from the freezing and melting of glaciers. Unlike volcanic islands, alone at sea, the Outer Banks' land has always been our land, now stranded in the ocean. Their plants and animals are our plants and animals, now held fast by the Pamlico Sound and the Atlantic. Because Barrier Islands shift, Ocracoke is always in the process of creation, with the ocean licking ever closer to the woods. In 1933, the, the tide was washing in these windows. Living out here is, is nature, you know, and we use this term sparingly. We're, on Ocracoke, we live on the edge, number one, and two, our visitors that come here are just amazing. So that's the two re good reasons for me to be out here is the, is the nature side, but also the people. To learn more about Ocracoke wildlife, read my story in the July 2025 issue of Our State magazine, and consider becoming a subscriber to have the magazine delivered straight to your door. This video is sponsored by Grandfather Mountain Stewardship Foundation. Get outside, get close to nature, or maybe just get away from it all. When you get to Grandfather Mountain and you get a look at the new interactive Wilson Center for Nature Discovery, you get inspired. Come to Grandfather Mountain and leave inspired. To see more videos like this, subscribe to the Our State YouTube channel.